coming to the end of our day. Um, and just before we literally say goodbye, um, we would like to invite Andrew Jones to just say a few kind of summary, uh, you know, summarize a little bit of what he's heard. Now, Andrew, you know, on this paper, it says a lot about Andrew. Uh, he's, it's, a, it's a huge amount of background, but he is an international development specialist. He's worked in the sector for nearly 30 years. Most recently, he spent eight years working at VET as head of partnerships before he retired in January 2018. And if this is what retirement looks like, <laughs> it's not exactly what I thought. Uh, during because he works so he's working so much still. Um, during his time with FET, Andrew led the team which designed and implemented the DFID funded health partnership scheme. Um, you know, he's a special specific interest in global health and he has you know huge experience in all the areas of access to safe surgery, obstetric trauma, anesthesia care for low middle income countries training um, and designing of grants and we are so grateful to Andrew for for helping us to connect with that and just you know he's seen um, Esther Ireland as a baby as a little fledgling um, and then seen us move all the way along um, and is currently actually some of you will have met Andrew this morning and some of you will meet him uh, after this meeting he's currently helping us with uh, an impact looking at the impact of the Esther Ireland partnerships and um, so Andrew we're extremely grateful to you and Andrew has a history of coming up at the end beginning and the end of these partnerships for partnership forums over the years so we're delighted to hear what you have to say today how have we progressed Andrew what else do we need to do ah well thank you uh, thanks Nadine um yes retirement just personified here um in case you're worried in fact I've just decided to keep about 25 percent of my time working and the, the rest not so um you're actually quite lucky I'm standing here at the moment because um, last week um, our four-year-old grandson was staying with us and as I as he was saying good night to me he said good night pops I love you and all the rest of it he sneezed straight in front of my, in, in my face um, uh, Sunday I started also sneezing and uh, thought oh my goodness I'm coming down with a cold however I did buy those wonderful medications you know the day and night capsules I went and fortunately just stopped myself taking the night nighttime catch about an hour ago, uh, which would have seen me slumped somewhere in the corner. Of course, the COVID test was done as well. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, as Nadine has uh, already said, I'm I'm really here as part of a, a, diff, a an extension of some work that we've been doing. Um, with Esther Island uh, over the past few months about um, impact and um, evidence of impact. And uh, thanks to those who've been part already of um, a focus group this morning, which we ran as part of that. And then there's another one starting in oh, two minutes time. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, but we've got that under control, I think. Great, thanks. Um, so closing remarks are supposed to, I think, sum up what's happened during the day um, and reflect what's happened. Well, uh, unless you've been asleep most of the time, I, th I think probably you know what's been said. So I'm not going to go back and repeat that. But I, I do have some just general points, which I think have come to mind as I've been, as I went through the focus group this morning and as I've heard people talk um, during the day. And there are two or three points. The first, the first one, and I apologise to those online um, who are um, not in Ireland, because a lot of this is going to be a little bit domestically focused. So the first point, but the first point I want to make is think about what you're learning. Um, write it down and share it. Demonstrating reciprocal benefit of partnerships is so important right now as we try to demonstrate to our respective funders and governments what the benefit, the additional benefit of working through the partnership model is. And one of the ways we can do that is by documenting what it is that we're learning um, and, and really pulling that together. So I think that's really important. Um, Freddie from um, Uganda was earlier talking about how there'd been uh, learning on the NHS side in the UK about um, leadership. Um, Louise referenced also some, some um, reciprocal learning in her presentation as well. And then the second point is shout about your achievements. Don't, don't keep it to yourself. I find it amazing actually talking to people who say, well, 
yeah, we just did it and it's fine. You know, we, 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 we carry on and we go on to the next thing. Well, make sure people know about it. Again, because in, in the current climate, it's really important that domestically people understand. And it's interesting, actually, just um, in here, um, there is, I think, as Anne referenced this morning, there, there is reference to the part that Irish people can play in the implementation of development policy. And if partnerships aren't an implementation at local level of development policy, I don't know what is. So make sure that people understand what's happening. Speak to your local media, speak to the national media. Um, and, and I'm sure Irish Aid would be very pleased that the message is getting out that international development is important. It's an important part of the foreign affairs agenda. Uh, but it's also important for the, the public at large to understand how local people are involved and how they can be involved in themselves implementing. Third point would be to say, just make sure that your partnership becomes institutionalized. So often, um, a partner partnerships quite, quite rightly often start from personal relationships between uh, one or two people. But it's important that they move on beyond that in order to be sustainable. People move on, people change roles. Um, and so it's really important that in, in, in that context, the partnerships become institutionalized so that you mitigate the effects of um, people moving on and, and changing roles. And then the, the, the final point I'd make is just to say that partnerships do work. Um, I've been working now for however many years it is in, in this framework of um, uh, institutional health partnerships. And uh, many of you in, um, in this room will have your own examples and those online will have their own examples of what can be achieved when partners work together. I remember um, right at the beginning, I think, um, Louise referenced the uh, DFID funded health partnership scheme, which I was uh, privileged to manage. And right at the beginning, before this started, I remember DFID folks saying, <laughs> yes, yes, we, 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 but we don't do development like this. This is not how we do it. Um, and now, to their credit, it was ministers who pushed it through at a political level. And we ran the health partnership scheme for five years, I think. And of course, as Louise said earlier, there was to be a successor programme worth somewhere around 50 million pounds and that got cancelled, sadly. But that just shows how the, the, um, the attitude within DFID changed because they saw through the evaluations and the, the consistently high ratings we had um, in our annual reporting, um, what the impact of the partnerships working was. So partnerships do work. And uh, what I would say is keep working on your partnerships. Use Esther to support you when necessary. And then tell the world what you're achieving. Thank you.